Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm gonna show you this video tutorial of Ansys Workbench of a swirling flow generator with the CFD numerical simulation method. In this case, we will simulate a swirling flow generator. We call it a turbo swirl. Here is the photo of this turbo swirl device, and uh, here is a sketch of this turbo swirl device. This turbo swirl device is originally used for uh, uphill teaming process of liquid steel in the ingot casting process. In the ingot casting process, the liquid steel can flow in from this horizontal runner, then flow out from this vertical runner. Then the liquid steel can flow rotationally automatically. In this case, we want to use the CFD method to simulate this whirling process. And we also did some water model experiment with this turbo throttle device. We can see that in the experiment, we found that an air core vortex was formed in center of this uh, turbo soft device. In this case, we want to use the numerical simulation to simulate this air core vortex. We already had some results. Uh, here we can see that here is the water volume fraction of water. Uh, we can clearly see that an air core vortex was formed in the numerical results and it can agree very well with the experimental results. So in this uh, video tutorial, we are going to show how to do this simulation. We will follow these procedures one by one. First is the geometry of this fluid domain of this turbo solar device. Then we can generate a mesh of this uh, geometry. Then we will do the fluid setup. And finally, we will have some post-processing. Uh, for this case. Okay. First, we will go into this workbench. Just, uh, okay, bench. We have this workbench of version 19.1 and the version between 18, 19.1, 19.2, they all have no too much differences for this case. And uh, firstly, here is the workbench. Uh, we will use Fluent. Uh, we can simply choose this Fluid Flow, Fluent and drag it here, then we will have this geometry, the mesh, the setup, solution, and results. And if you also want to maybe use the geometry with different methods, it's also we can add it uh, different steps one by one. First, we can delete it. Yeah. Uh, we can choose the geometry, drag the geometry to here, and uh, you can define the name, for example, we will build a geometry of a uh, turbo swirl, so yeah, this turbo swirl, oh, okay. In the geometry part, we have two tools to build the geometry. One is called space claim, and the other one is design modeler. The space claim is the newer one, but in this case, I prefer to use design modeler because this geometry is not so complicated. It's uh, good enough to do it with design modeler, so Click it. Yeah, here is the window of this design modeler. You can see here is the coordinates. Uh, first, we'll go back to see the dimension of this uh, fluid domain of this turbo device. Here you can see uh, this fluid domain uh, has many cylinders and uh, also a conical part, conical part. First, we will build this big cylinder. Uh, it has a head of 50 millimeter and a diameter of 150 millimeter. Yep. So in design modeler, it's very easy to build a cylinder. There are many other options, different kind of shapes. You can choose cylinder. And first, we need to decide the, the base plane. So you can see the the base plane will be in the yeah x y plane. You can zoom in. Use the group button to zoom, zoom in. Okay. Uh, we can see that it has a diameter uh, cylinder here. Now we can we can change the height. It will be zero point zero five meter, and with a radius of zero point zero seventy five meters. So we can click generate. So it's here we can use this button to jump to fit it 
to see it. And if the millimeter meters here, because we can choose to millimeter, it's more easy to understand. And okay, then the second part is the conical part. Yes, also not difficult. Click create, and we have the cone option. Click it. First, we need to choose the position. It will be from the top of this big cylinder. So the original position will be from the 50. Yeah, so it will start here. And uh, it will have the height of uh, 20 millimeter. So here, 20. And we can see it has, will have the radius uh, of 25 millimeter on the top. And on the bottom will be 20 plus 25, 45. So the base radius will be 45. And then the top will be 25. Yeah, then click generate. We have this conical part. The next part will be the, the vertical cylinder. We can also build the cylinder again. It will be starts from the 70. And it has a, a diameter of 25, and the height will be 153. Okay, click generate. Okay, we have it. Okay, this final part will be this horizontal runner. Uh, it also is also a cylinder and with a height of 200 millimeter and also 25 millimeter readers. Okay, we can build the cylinder again. In this case, we want to have cylinder in the uh, in this y direction, for example, uh, in this x direction. Sorry. So we should change the base plan. In this case, it will be in the base plan of y z. Just simply click y z and click apply. So in this case, the cylinder will be in the this direction. First, we will change its original position. It can be in this side. So it will be uh, shift uh, from this local coordinates in the x direction of minus 50. And also local coordinates of y, so it will be 25 millimeters upper. In this case, it has its original positions already. Then it will be 20, 200 millimeters long and with diameter 25. Click generate. Yeah, we have this yeah, fluid domain of this turbo solid lines. Then we can turn this geometry off and go to the mesh part. And then click mesh and drag it here. You can click to any position of this uh, green part. And to drag the geometry to the mesh directly. Okay. Double click the mesh, we will go to the mesh window. Yeah. Here you can see the window of the mesh and also the geometry of the Tabrasol device. You can use the scroll button to change the view. Okay, it will be like this. Then just click the mesh because it will be a CFD simulation. So we'll change the physical per preference to CFD. Right? And uh, we also prefer to use the structured mines. We will usually use the cut cell method. First, we can do a simple mesh first. It will, will be a very complex mesh, but we can refine it later. You can see the, the mesh is very coarse. We, we can see the sizing part. So the maximum size will be 38, more than 38 millimeters, very large. So we can change this one. Maybe we can input two, then it can calculate automatically. Okay, the maximum size in this case is 2.4 millimeter. We click generate mesh. Then we are uh, going to have a much finer mesh. Uh, and usually in this case is enough for our calculation. Yep. And we can go to statistics. 
you can see that's uh, how many elements uh, in this mesh it will be around 117 thousand elements which is good and in the real uh, safety study usually we will do a mass sensitivity study and uh, two five mass will cost uh, cost too much uh, computational and uh, computer resources but two five two cost mice cannot give us the good results the next part we need to define the inlet and the outlet position in this case the liquid flow in here and flow out here so first we will right click these parts insert a name selection we will choose surface here is the inlet we click it and choose apply then we can right click it give it give it a name for light and also right click here add another name selection so click here and apply so here will be the out light yeah okay so except the in light out lights the all the other parts uh, will be defined in walls uh, in the fluent setup and the in lights out lights can be recognized automatically in fluent as well okay then we can turn it off then we will use the fluent okay drag it here and also drag the mesh to set up we can see that here uh, shows different signal so we can right click it and uh, click update the mesh then the mesh can be read properly by the fluent server it takes some time okay now we can right click setup then we will have this yeah affluent launcher then click ok yeah here is the setup of the fluent uh, first we'll have we'll have a look at the uh, yeah this all the windows for example here's the general information we can have the see the scale so how large how long and how wide and how, what's the height of this fluid domain we can change the unit to millimeters easy to understand uh then close we also will do the simulation with uh time dependent calculation so it will be transient calculation and there was also, also the active gravity in this case it will be yeah uh, in the gravity will be in the negative z direction so it will be negative negative 9.8 around okay in this case we will simulate water and air in our fluid domain so we will definitely use mouth face model so right click uh, so sorry double click and uh, you will go to the mat face model we will choose volume of fluid model which is also called VOF model we have two faces and keep all other uh, setup to default value click OK because we have two faces we can go to the materials we can see fluid and solid we will use fluid of course but here is only air so but we can double click it we will also add uh, the uh, water faces in this case uh, we will choose it from fluent database and scroll you to the bottom here is the water liquid and there is other properties of the water then click copy so this water faces is added to the materials then click close and close this also and then we can go back to the multi-face model we can click here and here faces we have two faces this will define which is primary primary faces face and which is secondary face so double click here we use air as uh, the premier face we can give it a name air and we will use this one double click we will use water for the secondary face and give it uh, a name also water yeah and in this simulation uh, the swirling flow uh, will uh, come right 
generate very strong turbulence. So we will also have the turbulence model. We'll go to the base code part, double click. And uh, we can use the KY model, K model, K omic model. But I uh, stress to use the renal stress model because it can recognize the renal stresses in different directions. Uh, it, so it will give us more accurate results of the swirling flow. Yeah, and also can choose this sub model with stress omega, then click OK. Yep. Uh, next part, we will go to the materials, materials finish, and we'll go to the cell zone condition. Just uh, double click. Then we will choose this part. So we will use only fluid, no solid. And uh, also we can give it a name because it's turbo swirl, we can name it uh, turbo swirl. Okay, then click OK. The next part will be the boundary condition. It's also very important. First is the e light. You can double click it. E light. In the e light, we can choose different types of this e light condition. Uh, for example, velocity in light, pressure in light, or mass flow. Yeah, all kind of. In this case, we will give the uh, e light with a fixed velocity. So we will choose velocity in light. Yeah, we will give it velocity maybe 0 0.35. Click OK. You can also try other uh, velocities. And then in this case, in the inline position, we only want to water to flow in here, no air. So we also to need to define the, uh, the air and the water. In this case, we only can uh, add it to the secondary phase. So we we'll added water. In this case, it means that in this case, the volume fractions of water will be uh, zero, but we only want water. It means that we, if we put one, it means only water will be uh, filled in this inlet position. And here only can input uh, the numbers uh, between zero to one. If we input two, you can see that, yeah. The, the range is only 0 to 1. So we input 1 means that only water will flow in. Okay, then we'll go to the outlight. You can see in outlight, we go back to the mixture. So we also can choose different kind of outlight conditions. Uh, in this case, there will be nothing on top of this outlight position. So we'll choose simply pressure outlight and keep on the default value. And uh, another important thing is that in the, uh, the air will go into this uh, outlet position to form the air core vortex. So in this case, we need to know that the air can go into the outlet position, but uh, the water will only flow out. In this case, we can add it water and to make sure that here is zero. So it means that no water will backflow to the fluid domain. It only water will only flow out from the outlet position. Click OK. OK, this part is finished. Then we go to the solution, the method. First, we need to choose the pre how to solve the pressure and velocity coupling. Uh, there are many methods. You can choose between this. In this case, I stress to use PSO. And if you want to have a more accurate results, you can change the uh, to solve the uh, displacement rate and the linear stresses with higher order. Yeah. The next part we can go to the residual. Double click the residual part. The residual part means that during the calculation, it will calculate the continuity, the velocities, also the uh, omega, which is the properties of the uh, turbulence, also different stresses in six directions. Uh, usually we use this value. Its default value is usually enough, but if also you want to get more accurate results, you can use 0 0.0001. But in this case, we use the default value. Uh, click OK. Uh, so next part, we need to initialize the uh, calculation. Because in this case, uh, 
the liquid will flow in from the inlet, so we'll compute from the inlet. And uh, we can click the initialize. Because during the calculation, we also want to know how will the alcohol vortex form. In this case, we can first build a plan to see uh, how it looks like after the initialization. We go to the counter, double click. Then we will see that we can choose, the, for example, the faces and the volume fraction. We can choose water. Then we need to build a plan in the center of this turbo swirl. So we will build a new plan here. So we will new, build a new plan in the center of this turbo swirl. We will be missed that uh, y coordinates will be zero. And we can do uh, uh, to point out three points. Make zero, zero. So these three points can make sure that is a specific plan. Maybe in the center, we can define the plan center. Let's give it a name. No. Click create. Yeah, we have the plan. So we choose the plan center and uh, click uh, display. Yeah, sorry, need to be filled. Click again. So you can see, you can click this Y, you can see. It means that you can see the the counter it means that only water is in this plan, and uh, during the calculation you can see that alcohol vortex will will be formed in the center of this part so gradually. Okay, then how to set up this animation of this alcohol vortex formation? We can go to this solu uh, solution animations. Double click. Okay, we can choose. How many steps we will gonna to save because uh, if we save it every step it will be a lot of files so we, we can choose maybe 25 oh, it's up to you uh, okay and uh, then we'll choose these counters we have already built here and to click preview so it will be this direction which is not what we want we can go to maybe Try it with different positions. Uh, in this case, ah, uh, this will be the top position. Yeah. So in this case, this uh, figure will be uh, saved every twenty-five steps, and the animation can be saved after the calculation. Then we click OK. Then we go to the run calculation part. Double click. In this case, we will use channel calculation time step because it's very strong turbulence and swirling flow, so uh, I stress very small time steps, maybe 0 0.01 second. And we can have, uh, in this case, at least, uh, I remember, 8 um, seconds as needed to form the full uh, echo attack, so we need maybe 80,000 steps. And we also want to increase this maximum uh, steps, uh, irritation steps, I think one time step, uh, we can increase to 50, usually it's enough. In this case, in all your calculations, you always need to check this case before you click this calculate button. Click it, check the case, is that okay? So, okay, it recommends to check the math first. Okay, we can go back to general and check the math. It will give, give us some information about the mesh. Uh, it's no problem. We can go back again. Then we can check the case again. Yeah, it shows no recommendation to make this. Yeah. Click OK. Then we can go to the calculation. Click the calculate button. There are two windows during the calculation. One is uh, the scale receivers of all the uh, all the values during the calculation, the continuity, the velocities, the omega, uh, and also the stresses. You can see that when it reach uh, 0 0.001, it will go to the next time step. Yeah. So 
now we have finished one time step so now it's calculating the second time step and every 25 time steps uh, one of these figures will be saved okay here is an example of this uh, CFD simulation of swirling, uh, swirling flow generator and uh, I'm gonna show you some results I have done before uh, especially the animation of these counters so we need to stop this uh, calculation first we can turn it off yeah so in this case we have uh, already have uh, results we calculated before you can see here is the uh, volume fraction of water that, that's calculated from the first time step and uh, the figure was saved every 25 time steps you can see that our car vortex will form the inner center and uh, increase gradually so after you uh, do all the calculation, you also will get this uh, video or animation. Yeah. Then we can go to another part of the post processing. Okay, we will see another case that we uh, calculated just now with all the results of 8 seconds. Uh, we will do the post processing uh, to see, for example, the velocity vectors or velocity uh, magnitude in the results part. In this case, yeah, we will uh, delete this first. If you finish all the calculation, it's also for so check here in the solution part. But in the part we, we did just now, it, it has not finished yet. But this one has finished. Then we can go to the results it's here, drag it here, and uh, drag, so drag the solution to the results part. Then the results part can read all the solution from the Fluent Solver. Double click. We can see that here is the yeah terrible solar device, but it's only the frame. But you can go to this part. So yeah, yeah. Check this. Then you can see the yeah the whole domain of this terrible solar device. For example, we can see that what uh, looks like on the outlet because on the lot outlet there will be very strong spring flow. We can go to the Velocity vector. Vector we can give its name velocity outline. Okay, then we can choose a position. We can choose outline and uh, then click apply. Here we can see here is the velocity vector, so we can see. Uh, clear swirling flow on the outline yeah and also we want to know now what's the how it uh, looks like of the uh, velocity maybe in the center plan in this case we also need to build a new plan in the center same like uh, we did in the fluent solver click plan we can give it a name plane center so we can build it maybe in the y z uh, in the x z plan and yeah millimeter zero meter so click apply yeah it's built so then we can go to the counter again the counter of uh maybe you can give it a name it's axel for example axel Velocity in center. 
center plan. Yep. Then we can choose the center plan, and here we can choose the velocity. I can choose the velocity in z direction. We can apply. Yeah, so we can see. We also see the maybe in the y direction. So it's we can solve the swirling flow clearly. We can choose velocity v. Apply. Yeah, so we can see in this direction. Uh, is the velocity in this direction and here is velocity in this direction means strong swirling, strong swirling flow is formed in the center. We also can see the, for example, the arc vortex. We can go build a new counter, make it the name of the vortex. And then we can choose the center plan again and choose the water volume fraction, I click again, and uh, check this arc velocity, yeah. so you can see this arc attacks in the center. So okay, that's all of this uh, video tutorial of this uh, NSS workbench using CFD method to simulate this swirling flow generator. Thank you for watching.